boom, 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 check, generate another number. And you can see it will just continue doing that no matter um, how many times I do it. It's generating that number. So that's not like hard coded or anything in there. That's how I'm actually using what we learned today in this video in my app. So hey, Darren here, and I recently completed my first Thunkable X app, and it's available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. It's called Tip Trainer. And one of the challenges I faced was generating a random dollar amount so that my users could practice calculating tips inside of the practice section of the app. So I wanted to share this challenge of generating a random dollar amount not only to show you how to do, do this, but also to show you kind of the logic behind it because I think it's pretty valuable. There are basically two steps. The first is generating a random number, and then the second is formatting that as a dollar. So let me show you how you can do that. To kick things off, I've uh, gone ahead and created a little UI screen here, and we see there's an original label here and a formatted label, and then there's a button. Um, in, in the app, currently this doesn't do anything. I can click the button, nothing happens. And then if I go to my blocks, I have uh, two variables created. One is the original number variable. And then the second is the formatted number variable. So the goal is every time I click the button, I wanna see a random number generated here. And then for the formatted, I wanna see that number that was generated I want to see that as a dollar amount. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first part of this was actually generating a random number. So to do this, I'm going to create a function called generate random number. And what this button is going to do is set this value equal to a random number. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a set block for this original number variable. And then we're going to set this to something fun. So let me go ahead and do this and then I'll explain it afterwards. So I've added in a few math blocks here. Let's walk through this. So the outer block is just a plus block. So we're adding two numbers together. So the first number is a random integer from one to 99. So an integer is just a whole number, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 99. So this block is going to give us a number one through 99. And then to that, we are adding a number that is being divided by 100. And what is this number? Well, again, it's a random integer from one to 99. And when we divide this by 100, it's going to give us uh, a, a, a cent. So dollars, you have cents or pennies. So you have one cent, two cents. If you get to up to 100 cents, that's a dollar. So when we add these together, we should get a number like 45.45 or something like that. So when this runs, we should get a dollar amount. So it should be like 45 and 25 cents or something like that. So let's go ahead and set this up so that it will so that it will display on the screen. So from this function, I want to actually return this variable. That way I can do something like this. So when the button is clicked, I can then set the original dollar label to from original dollar label set text to, and then I can just call this function. And what this function does is return this random number that we generated. Let's take a look at this in the app. All right, so you can see as I click these this button, it's generating random dollar amounts every time. It just keeps on going. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is one of the things we'll need to account for whenever we're formatting this as a dollar amount. We don't want it to be 0.5, we want it to be 0 0.50. So now that we have it generating this original value, let's see what we can do to actually format this as a dollar. So I'm going to create a, another function and we're gonna call this convert to string. Encoding a string is another word for a text value. So it's all uh, letters or you wanna treat things um, like they are text instead of numbers or a Boolean uh, type variable. These are actual text. So that's another word for string. 
So that's why I'm using that there. So what we want to do is from in this function, we want to take in a number and then we want to return that number in a text format. So we need to take in a variable. So we can do that by clicking on this gear icon, adding an input, and then giving that input a name, like we'll call it number. And so now we want to format this number as something else. So in this first function, we updated this original number variable. So the second one, I want to set this formatted number variable. So let's go ahead and grab the set block and update that to formatted number variable. Now the easiest thing to do, or the first thing we need to do, um, is actually add that dollar sign in front of the number. So in order to do that, let's grab the text block and join, because we want to join a character to the front of our number. What character do we want to add? We want to add the dollar sign. And then what, what do we want to add that to? Well, we took in a variable here called number. So we can go to variables and we can grab number. So what this is going to do is whatever number we take in, it's going to add a dollar sign to the front of it and then set that equal to here. And then I can return a variable. And so let's put in formatted number variable. So this function is going to set formatted number variable and it's going to return it. So whenever this button is clicked, we want to update the dollar label, but we also want to update our formatted dollar label. So we can set text to, and then we can just call this function here, convert to string, and we can plug in our number. So here's our function, convert to string. And so what do we need to pass into it? We want to pass that original number variable that was set in this generate random number function. So we can pass in our original number variable. And we want to be sure that this statement is after this one, because this statement generates our random number, sets this variable, and then we can convert this variable after it's set to a string. So let's see what this looks like in the app. Alrighty, so here we go. We have the original number on the left, and then we have the dollar amount on the right. So you can see all we're doing is adding that dollar sign to the front. But what if we run into the case where, like, we, like before, where there was, there was a zero on the end of the number, so usually you don't add that zero, or you don't show that zero unless, so here it goes. So what do we do in this case where it's a 0.5? We wanna add that zero to the formatted value. So we need to add some kind of logic to check to see if we need to add that zero. Now this is gonna get pretty mathy, so bear with me. All right, so let's circle back and see where we are. So our first function is generating a random number, like 17, between one and 99, and then generating a random uh, cent amount, so like 0.94, adding those together and then giving us 7.94, 17.94. All right, and so what we want to check for is if this last character is zero, then it's going to look like this. And in our formatted value, we want to add that zero back so that it looks like dollar sign zero and so one way that you can do this and the way I chose to do this was to take your amount 17.94 you multiply it by 100 to give you a, a whole number then you take the remainder divided by 10 and check that value so here um, this character right here is called a modulus or modulo and what that does is take the remainder so um, actually this is incorrect this should be 1794 so 1794 divided by 10 the remainder of that is 4 because 90 divided by 10 well that would give you 9 but then the remainder of that is 4 so it's whatever this last character is essentially so 1,794, the remainder divided by 10 is 4. So let's look at another example. So we have a value 35.97. We'll multiply that times 100 to give us 
597. And then correct that. 3597, the remainder divided by 10, is going to give us 7, because that's what the last character is. And so in our case, we have the number 39.5. And so 39.5 times 100 is going to give us 3,950. And then 3,950, the remainder divided by 10 is going to give us 0, telling us that we need to add that 0 back in. So this, my friend, is what we want to do in the code. We want to add this check. So whenever we want to add a check, we do a if statement. So we, we're doing a conditional check. So we want to say if the number times 100, the remainder of that value divided by 10 is equal to zero, then add the zero. So let me add that in the code here and then we can uh, take a look at it. Alrighty, so here we have it. So we have our conditional check. We see we have our number that we've taken in, the variable. We multiply that times 100, and then add it in this round function here. All that does is make sure that when we multiply it times 100, we have a nice whole number, an integer. There's no decimal places. And then we take the remainder of that divided by 10, and we say if that is equal to 0, then we add a 0 to our number. So we set number to number plus a 0. And so now, whenever we run into that case in the generator, we should see that zero in the formatted value. So let's see if I can find an example for us. Boom, there we go. So the original, 75.8, and then the formatted, 75.80. All right, so one last thing that could make this a little bit more complex, and some of you may ask it, is here, I'm not allowing for the uh, sent amount to be zero. So if I change that to zero, we could run into the case where the number that we get is not like a 12.01 or a 12.1, but it could just be a flat 12 with no decimal places. Now, uh, how we check for this, this is a whole lot easier. Um, there's an easier way to do this. We can add another else statement. So else if Funkable has a nice function for this called this is. So is even, we can change that. There's another one in here called is whole. So we can check to see if the number is whole. So then we just plug in our number here. So if the number is whole, then we can add something similar to this. So number join and then 0 0.00 and that would add the 0 0.00 to the end of our whole number. So instead of 12 here, we just add the 12.00 if it's that whole number. All right, so I'm running into a little issue here. I think I need to re reverse this if statement. So if I reverse this, this is how I originally had it. I just did it out of order during the video. So yeah, first we want to check if the number is whole. We can add this. And then we can add in this zero because the whole number would pass this check as well. So it's, it would add this zero anyways. All right, there we go. So now we have a value of 67, which is a whole number. And now we formatted it as a dollar amount. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you're math minded like me, I think you will have. But let's actually take a look at how I use this in my app. So I'm in my Tip Trainer app and on the practice screen, up at the top section, it says, what is 10% of 23.69? And so what my code did was actually generate that number. And so now every time they give an answer, it checks that answer. And then if we set reset, it generates another number. And I can adjust this, boom, boom, boom check, generate another number. And you can see it will just continue doing that no matter um, how many times I do it. It's generating that number. So that's not like hard coded or anything in there. That's how I'm actually using what we learned today in this video in my app. So I want to invite you if you want to see how this works in my app further, if you want to try it out, you can download my app Tip Trainer on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store today. And that is all for today's video. Happy coding.